we start to become aware of ourselves, we start to regard ourselves as a person, a being. And we start to see that we can do something. We can control and change something in the world. And the more powerful we become, and the more understanding about the reality we get, the more knowledge we get, the more we can do. The greater is our influence, the greater is our power, our force. Does this sound reasonable to you? If we are in question, we would say that as long as we have some intelligence and power, we are somebody, we are a person. There is a threshold for that in our mind. As long as our intelligence is above the threshold, that we are able to be aware of the environment and ourselves, we consider ourselves a person. And if our intelligence is below the threshold, we stop to be aware of the environment and ourselves, and therefore we don't regard ourselves a person anymore. And as long as our power is above the threshold, which was set by ourselves, that we can control our life and environment in a way with which we are satisfied, we consider ourselves somebody, a person. And if our power falls under that threshold, we don't regard ourselves to be anybody. We don't consider ourselves a person anymore. We want to die. And closely related with intelligence and power is also the ability to communicate. We can communicate, express ourselves through words, sounds, music, touch, work, by changing the environment. That is how we are expressing ourselves. We communicate with the reality and with others. We as a person. We are basically giving out seeds which are in us. Does this sound reasonable to you? Which being is considered the most powerful in this world? Isn't that human? Why? Because of sharp teeth, razor-sharp nails and the strongest muscles? No, because of intellect. Do you agree with that? And at the same time we observe also the world, the sun, the moon, the stars. And we are aware that they are being controlled by a much greater power force than ours is. Because we cannot control them, but they are controlled. Does this sound reasonable to you too? If so, why wouldn't it be reasonable then to expect, why wouldn't it be possible that behind such a tremendous force there is also a very great intelligence which we could call God? And why wouldn't it be reasonable to expect that God is anything less than we are, that God is greater than we are? If we are able to change the world, isn't He capable of changing it too? If we are able to think, why he shouldn't be able? If we see, feel, why he shouldn't see and feel? We are able to speak and why then are people saying that he cannot speak, communicate with us? If we express ourselves through our work, why he shouldn't express himself through his work? If we are a person, why he shouldn't be a person too? Why do we disagree with David when he sings in Psalm 19? The heavens declare, the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So everyone is aware of this tremendous power, power of God. So it would be reasonable, it would make sense, that we would expect that God is a person, the most powerful one and the most intelligent one. And even more, we trust the force which regulates this world. For example, we do trust gravity that it will not fail. So if we trust the force, his force, wouldn't it be reasonable to trust God too? But many of us cannot embrace the idea of a God who is powerful, intelligent, a person who could communicate with us even though it would make a complete sense. Many of us are at least at the beginning not willing to accept this idea, this seed. Why not? Maybe because there is in us already another seed. Which one? There are many problems we are facing in this world, we as individuals and we as the world. So would you mind that you would have more power and greater intelligence than you have already, so that you would be able to solve at least some of the problems? You wouldn't? That would be nice, wouldn't it be? But nevertheless, we would still have some problems. Would you mind that you would have even more power and even greater intelligence to be able to solve them too? That would be nice too, wouldn't it be? 
You see, in order to solve all problems, you would have to have the ultimate power and the ultimate intelligence, you as a person. And that wish, seed, is in us all. We want to be God, we want to overthrow God. We are in a rebellion against Him, and that is the reason why we say no to Him. We would like to be the Savior of the world, being praised and worshipped instead of God. But we might not agree with that. Don't you see there are many problems in the world? Who will solve them? We are praying, doing this and that, but it seems there is no response. So therefore we can trust only ourselves and not God. This is the only thing which makes sense to us and it is completely reasonable. Well, that is a good excuse, a good covering of the fact that it is you who want to be God. So you don't trust the Lord. Well, does a rebel trust the ruler? No. Rebel justifies his actions, his thinking, and finds faults in the ruler's actions and thoughts. That is normal and expected thing to do from a rebel. And what is the typical story of a typical rebel? We had some wish and we asked the Lord to fulfill it. But he didn't. And that's why we don't want to acknowledge his existence. And that's why we are claiming that we can trust only ourselves and because of that, that is the only thing which makes sense to us. We are basically claiming that because God had not fulfilled one wish of ours, that he doesn't exist. Which wish was that? It could be any wish, because today it could be one wish, tomorrow another one, for me this one, for you that one. So basically we are claiming that because God doesn't fulfill all our wishes, he doesn't exist. Now let's say that God would fulfill all our wishes. Who would in that case be the supreme controller? Would not that be me or you? Would not you be God? Let me tell you what we have done. We knew that there is God, the mightiest person of them all. Because of that, we asked him to fulfill our wish. But in reality, we wanted to cheat him. We were pretending that we are asking him nicely. But in reality, we, me and you, were giving him orders. In reality, we regarded ourselves as a God and we regarded him as our servant who has to obey us. We wanted to put ourselves above the God and just because he said no to us, we don't want to acknowledge him? Do you see how corrupted are human mind and heart? If God would obey our orders, he would not be God anymore, we would say that we are God. And since God doesn't obey our orders, we say what? The same thing. God is never God in our own eyes. We are. But what kind of gods are we? Cheating, lying ones and such gods cannot be trusted. We were telling God that we accepted Him as a God. We were telling people that we accepted God as the Supreme Being. And we are telling that even to ourselves. And now it can be seen that we have never ever accepted God as the Supreme Being. We were lying to everyone, even to ourselves, from the beginning. How smart is that? We wanted to cheat the most intelligent being of them all. We are not smart gods, indeed. We wanted to be right and that God would be wrong. We wanted to tell the truth and that God would tell lies. We wanted to be intelligent and that God would be unintelligent. But every time we want to do this, it turns out that we are wrong, we are lying and we are stupid. We wanted to speak and God to be silent. But maybe it is time that we become silent and stop accusing him and that we start to listen to him. But there is so much suffering going on in this world. Why is there so much evil in this world? Why do we die? Why is God not doing anything about it? We cannot trust him. If he exists, he either doesn't have enough power to solve those problems or he doesn't know how to solve them or he just doesn't care for us. He doesn't love us. If he would love us, there would be no evil in this world. And when we read the Bible, where it is written that God is love, we say, yeah, right. And if we continue reading, we get an impression that God is angry with people for no reason at all. Didn't he create them at first place? We find that stupid. And we think that he will destroy them if they will not obey him. He is a dictator, isn't he? And we say to ourselves, that is not love, and that is not God.
And if we hate God and want to be cleverer and nicer than He is, if we want to be God, the story ends here. But if not, let us listen to what Christians, not pretenders who pretend they are Christians, the real Christians, His people, have to say about Him. Since you like to imagine things and since you would like to be God, let's imagine what kind of God you would be. You, a person, a God, would create persons who would not be able to question you. You would create persons who would never doubt you. You would create persons who would never say no to you. You would create persons who would never be able to leave you. And that is your definition of love. History is full of such people who didn't allow others to question them. It was forbidden to doubt them. No one was allowed to say no to them. And no one was allowed to leave them. And such people were known as cruel, evil men or women, dictators, who treated people as things and not as persons. Do you see how stupid definition of love you have? Your imagination of God is false one. But real God is not such God. He is not a dictator. We can mock Him, we can question Him, we can despise Him, we can pretend that we are Christians, His people, when in reality we are against Him. But no matter what we do, He supports us, He gives us intelligence and power. To some He gives more and to others less. But the question is, what do we do with that what was given to us? Do we use our intelligence and power to become dictators over other human beings? Are we giving glory to ourselves for everything which is good? And do we blame God for everything which is bad? Are we trying to put ourselves or the strongest rebel on God's place? Or do we acknowledge Him and are grateful to Him, giving Him the glory for everything which is good? And do we blame ourselves for everything which is bad? You see, we are rebels. And if bodies of rebels would not die, and if we would not become sick, we would become more and more powerful dictators over time, and the whole world would be very quickly destroyed by us. That is one reason why we get sick, and why we suffer, and why our bodies die. And as we can find out from the Bible, the whole world will be united together in the rebellion against God. There will be two great battles, where humans, some of them maybe even pretending to be Christians, Joined together with rebellious spirits, the devils, known also as gods, fallen angels, or spiritual guides, will try to overthrow God. Yes, God will give the rebels that what they want, the opportunity to attack Him for real, an opportunity to see their own victory. But their victory will happen only in their imagination. They won't be able to overthrow Him. Isn't He a nice God? He gives beings what they want. Well, I guess that now the Bible makes a little bit more sense to you. So yes, our bodies die and God is good and He loves us. But does our soul die too? Well, the Holy Bible says so. But some people claim that such a God is not the loving one. He should give us another chance, like a, a reincarnation or something. That would be a loving God, they say. Well, what kind of love would that be? If you would say no to a person and you would want to leave him, he would agree with you, but then he would drug you, erase your memory and start all over. He would again meet with you. You would again start to know him and then you would again say no to him and you would want to leave him. And he would again drug you, erase your memory and start all over until your brains would be so damaged that you would say yes. Is that love? For me, God of a reincarnation is not loving God, but deceiving and evil one who doesn't give me a chance to reject Him, to say no to Him, and who want to force me to love Him. And we just cannot force anyone to love us. As long as we are in this body, we can say yes to Him or no to Him, and our final yes or no will count for the eternity. You will be forever with Him, the greatest person of us all. But if you are thinking that you will wait for the last second of your life before saying Him yes, you are trying to cheat the Lord and God cannot be cheated. You don't know when and how will your body stop working. So the most right moment to say yes to the Lord is now. 
And what happens when you say yes to the Lord? You begin to listen about Him, to think about Him. Through His Word you become more and more like Him in nature. Your mind becomes similar in nature as His is. Your will becomes similar as His will is. You start to love all people and you regard them as persons, similar as He does. And since you become similar in nature to Him, there is no reason for you to ever say no to Him anymore, to ever want to leave Him anymore. And that transformation is taking place until He takes you to His kingdom. That's when your body dies. And this transformation could last for years or only seconds. But whatever the case might be, at the end it is completed. You see, God is the truth, the way, the life, the love. And if you say no to God, you have chosen yourself lie, your way, your will, death and hatred, evil. That is a stupid decision, but since God is wisdom and you say no to God, you say no to wisdom and yes to stupidity. It cannot be otherwise. God is asking us, do you want to be with me? Do you want to live with me or to leave me, to die? Do you want the truth or lie? Do you want to be your own God? Do you want to support false God? Or do you want to be with me and live forever? How do we say yes to the Lord? Well, first we dedicate energy and time which He has given to us to listening and to thinking and to inquiring about Him. And He will reveal Himself to us more and more. And we will see how and where science and all other ideas which go against the Lord deceive us. That is how we say yes to the Lord. And we say yes to the Lord when we say yes to the truth, to the life, to reason, wisdom, when we trust Him, no matter what happens with our material body. And we say no to Him every time when we use energy and time which He has given to us to run away from Him, to speak lie instead of truth, to choose stupidity instead of wisdom. We say no to Him when we curse people instead of blessing them when we are trying to be something more than others are, when we stop trusting Him when our body is in danger. Do you get the picture? You say yes to the Lord when you start to listen His word, the original seed, when you understand His word, and so on. Read the parable sower and you will know the rest. And you say yes to the Lord when you say no to the all evil seeds, ideas which are in you and for which it seems that they make sense, but they don't. You say yes to the Lord when you renounce all ideas which go against God, that is, against truth, against reason, wisdom, against love, real love. And in doing so, you will reject the original seed of evil, which is the idea that you are God. What will you choose? It is up to you. It is your choice. You have a free will. And you might want to continue listening this presentation or not. In the Bible it is many times mentioned, fear the Lord, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And since God is love, all this doesn't make sense to people. Why should one be afraid of love? And many times they also say, love is tolerant. Let's say that you work for someone, your boss, and there is your colleague who wants to be better than you are, and since he cannot be, he loses his mind, knocks you down, and starts to kick you with his heavy boots. And what is the reaction of your boss? He doesn't do anything because he is tolerant. You see, he is tolerant toward your colleague. He doesn't want to hurt his feelings or take away his pleasure, which he gets from hitting you. And in doing so, your boss is not tolerant to you. He loves your colleague and not you. But if he would love you, he would try to stop your colleague from hurting you. And since he would care also for your colleague, he would first try to warn him with a word. And if your colleague would not fear his word, your boss would try to separate him from you. And if your colleague would not come to senses, and if he would not fear to hit even the boss, your boss would have to use even more force. If your colleague would fear at least your boss, police, God, anyone, if he would be afraid to lose friendship with someone because of his action, he would calm down, 
he would come to senses, but if he would not fear anyone, he would continue trying to kill you. So I guess now you understand why is the fear of God the beginning of all wisdom. And you have seen that no one is really tolerant in this world, not even love, not even love. The question is only, what do you tolerate and what not? If you tolerate a lie, you don't tolerate the truth. If you are a friend with a lie, if you are nice with a lie, you are enemy of the truth. You are not treating nice the truth. Even if you are saying you do, but you know what? You are lying. God is trying to calm us down. He is showing to us his tremendous power that we would come to senses, but we refuse to fear him. And if and when we finally realize how powerful he is and that he is angry with us and that we were against him, man, then the fear of God falls on us. Beautiful thing. When I was for the first time afraid of God, realizing what a rebel I was, and still I am to a certain extent, how beautiful it was to ask him for his mercy. And he could say no to me because he is a person too, but he didn't. And the more you are right with God, the less you fear him. But fear is the beginning. And when you see that he is just and merciful, then you start to respect him and are grateful to him. And out of those two things, love is being born in you, but especially from the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. I hope I will tell you more about that the next time. I guess that now you know that there is much sense in biblical description of the reality, in things which you once considered stupid, and maybe you thought that no one can explain to you why is there suffering if God is good, why the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and so on. And I guess you have seen that it's your ideas about the reality which don't make sense. I guess there are still discrepancies in your mind between the description of the world of the godless science and God's wisdom written in the Bible. Let me tell you this, if you will search for lies in science, you will find them. Everyone can see and understand where science is lying to us. And if you still cannot see, listen to my video series Foundations and hopefully I will do some more videos where I will expose many more lies of science and its lying proofs which according to science prove without the shadow of the doubt that the Bible is wrong. But what if you still want to deny the Lord's ability to communicate with us, especially through his words written in the Bible? You could deny that my representation had any sense. That is one thing you could do. But I know that it has. And if you are honest, you know that it had to, at least to some extent. But you can lie to yourself if you want. That is your decision. And the other thing you could do is the following one. At the beginning, you might have an argument that the Bible is not the Word of God, because those things which were mentioned didn't make sense to you, but now they do. But you still don't want to admit that. So what can you do? The only thing you can do is to convince yourself that now you cannot believe that the Bible is the Word of God because now it makes sense. But who can trust you? First you were saying that you cannot believe the Bible is the Word of God because it doesn't make sense and now you are claiming that you cannot believe that the Bible is the Word of God because it makes sense. According to you, some person could make up the Bible. Yes, I agree. But what kind of a person? Since you, nor I, nor self-proclaimed masters of divinity, Christian theologians, nor people guided by spiritual guides, spirits, nor billions of people could not figure out those things by themselves, such person had to have greater intelligence than all of us have, who claimed that Bible doesn't make sense. But it does, and you can see that. And that intelligence, that wisdom is God, and He is trying to reveal Himself to us, not only through His work, the universe, but also through His words written in the Bible. Let the Lord bless you, and hopefully we, or you will hear me the next time, when I will, if God willing, try to present you the power of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power 
that can sow seed of love in you, so that you will be able to care and love all people, even those who wanted or want or will want to hurt you, and even those who were mean to you are mean and will be mean, even those. How wonderful and glorious will that be! God is good, and let He be praised forever. And if you agree, you may say Amen. So be it.